Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. Amongst the many confusing things that happened in the Avengers Endgame movie was the return of all the beloved superheroes we lost at the end of Avengers Infinity War. This was an immense victory for the Avengers crew and planet Earth, but it leaves us with some very interesting problems. Five years elapsed between the time Thanos snapped his fingers and disappeared everyone, and when Professor Hulk snapped his fingers and brought everyone back. And from what we can tell, all the people who have returned don't remember what happened and haven't aged at all. This is most apparent with Peter Parker, who was around 16 during the Decimation event. When he returns five years later, he clearly is still a teenager and not a 21-year-old. As a matter of fact, his MC wiki page states that he is technically 21 years old, but biologically only 16. So today we're going to be looking at the Decimation event and be talking about a few of the underlying problems it caused that weren't really talked about or seen in the films. Thanos the Mad Titan wasn't as mad as we'd all like to think he was. Overpopulation is a serious issue and it's something that could potentially lead to some very serious consequences for all of us. In the 80s, facing an overpopulation crisis, the Chinese Communist Party tried to engineer away the problem in a very Thanos way by imposing a one-child policy for the entire country. While there were a few exceptions, most couples would be heavily penalized for having more than one child, significantly changing the makeup of the average Chinese family. This controversial social engineering program was designed to ease China's resource problems. Fears of massive famines, the lack of energy and water drove the government to extreme policies. The decimation event created by Thanos is not all that different from the one-child policy. Sure, it's crueler because it actually erases lives that already have been half-lived, but the end goal is the same, to make life more sustainable. Something that's hard to do when supply is completely outweighed by demand. It's something we're already seeing in more extreme areas of our planet. For instance, the gradual migration of our planet's population towards city centers have created some pretty crazy real estate prices. In San Francisco, the average one-bedroom apartment costs $3,600 a month. That's about the same as the average salary for an American worker. Rapid population growth has led to massive deforestation in order to create more land for farming to sustain this new growth of population. And then there's the Cape Town fiasco that happened last year, where the South African city became the first major city in the modern era to completely run out of water, forcing residents to undergo extreme water rationing. Now, thankfully, these incidents of overpopulation only affect certain cities or regions of the planet. There still is plenty of space and resources here on Earth for everyone. So the decimation will only relieve certain issues in more overpopulated areas of the world. With disappearance of entire families and households in high-income residential neighbors like the ones found in Hong Kong or London, a quick revaluation of housing prices in these areas would have to occur, along with a drop in property taxes. Landowners, while well, the ones who are still alive at least, will have to scramble to fill in their empty properties with new tenants to cover their own overheads. Now, naturally, high-value real estate areas like Manhattan will repopulate much quicker. While towns and cities in less desirable locations might see mass migration and eventually even die out. But the real estate prices will really be the last of everyone's problems. All sorts of essential services would have to be stopped. Everything from the police to trash removal services will be understaffed. Governments will have to readjust their leadership to fill in gaps and quickly reanalyze each department's priorities and resource needs. There will be massive amounts of manpower shortages and less essential services might have to be neglected. For instance, the National Park Service might have to abandon many of their parks and campsites. Or maybe the federal government will determine that it's a better use of resources to have FEMA absorb the National Park Services in order to help keep stability and order during the confusion that follows the decimation. FEMA will have to coordinate a recovery effort and make sure that enough staff are on hand for more essential services. Another certain consequence of the decimation would be the complete and total collapse of the stock market. As demand is literally cut in half for all consumption and services, almost every listed company will have to drop in value. Many businesses will have to close because of lack of leadership or manpower. FEMA will have to also make sure that food production and other essential industries are kept running and producing. Then there's the even more complicated problem of processing and finding out just who exactly has died. 
Many of them might not have wills or immediate families. It'll be hard to determine what will happen to their belongings and property. Maybe finally we'll be able to use all those lawyers we have in this country for something useful. There are also more immediate problems that will need to be addressed. Statistically speaking, there'll be plenty of brand new orphans created by the event, many of them unable or too young to take care of themselves. Ideally, they will be rescued and maybe adopted by parents who also have lost their children. This would be a part of a greater effort by the Census Bureau to find out just exactly who is gone and who is still left. It will be a difficult task that requires local law enforcement to team up with the local populace and sweep houses door to door, especially to find vulnerable infants or pets that are now left alone. Basically, within the first few weeks and months, there will be complete chaos and a lot of essential services that we are used to will be completely out of order. Power plants will be closed due to a lack of staff, grocery stores shuttered from a lack of delivery drivers, airlines delayed because of not enough pilots, on top of all the planes that never made it safely back to the ground after their crews disappeared. But slowly things would stabilize and humanity would prevail as it has many times throughout history. In the 1300s, almost 50% of Europe's population was lost due to the Black Death. Although a great amount of culture and art was lost during this period of time, and it took more than 200 years for the region to repopulate, Populate, humanity eventually did recover and life expectancy and quality of life actually did increase. But when the Avengers complete their time heist and bring everyone back to life, several problems arise. For one, it's been five years, and we can expect that the world is already well on its way to recovering and going on without all those that were decimated. Sure, people will still be emotionally connected with those who were lost. But for the most part, the decimated have lost all of their property, money, and place in society, and basically no longer exists. They were legally dead, and to bring them back to life in such a large amount of them at one time will be very confusing and taxing on our system. Let's look at Peter Parker again, 16 years old at the time of death, technically 21 years old when he returns to the land of living, but he'll probably have to go back to high school and be in the same class with the students that were only 11 years old when he died. It should be interesting to see how Spider-Man Far Away From Home will deal with the situation. It is, after all, one of the first post-Avengers Endgame movies. Half of the world's population will return to living and find their homes occupied by strangers, their kids being raised by someone else, and their bank accounts completely empty. It'll be very strange and confusing for all these people who return, and our world will not have the resources to reabsorb them once again. The world, which has had five years to readjust to its smaller population, will now have to somehow take care of four billion extra people. Massive food, energy, and water shortages will cause panic, unrest, and most likely a lot of death. Billions of people will be wandering around homeless, taking over shelters, and emptying out food banks. It will take a huge concerted effort by the government to reintroduce these decimated people back into the population. Massive agricultural and food projects will need to be created in order to feed all those people who have returned. The riches and space that all those who have been left behind were now accustomed to will be taken away and once again redistributed. It will take some time for people to readjust, welcome back those who they have already mourned for and said goodbye to. It will be the strangest of times. So as you can see guys, these are just a few of the issues that are going on in the background of these movies. Of course, they aren't really discussed and that's kind of a problem because, you know, 4 billion people disappearing and then reappearing five years later will put a huge amount of stress on society. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button down below. And as usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.